Hey everyone, real quick tip here on tying in these uh, squirmy worms. Uh, the bluegill guys uh, probably should really seriously think about these things. The problem with these has always been trying to tie them in and as you do wrap the thread around the, uh, the, the worm material it's so soft that the, the, um, the thread will actually cut through the worm and it, it breaks off and it, it becomes kind of kind of frustrating. So what I want to show you is real quick here is how uh, you can do it and not have that issue and end up with a really nice um, worm on the end of a hook that looks something like this right here. And it's really nice because once the worm is on there, it won't come off. You can see as I stretch it, I mean really giving it a stretch here, that it stays the same right here and holds into place. These things are dynamite when you go chasing, uh, <clears throat> when you do go chasing bluegill. So what I use is a uh, size 8 uh, Mustad hook. It's a 3366BR. Um, it's a pretty standard, cheap, cheap hook. Um, now one of the things I do to make sure that my, you know, well actually you can do it a couple of different ways um, and I and I also do it a couple of different ways but one of the things that you can do is to wrap uh, a little bit of weight around the around the front and just make a um, just make a head a little uh, like a little jig head and you can use standard um, standard household thread that, that uh, seamstress may use to sew up a shirt or something like that. So let's go ahead and throw this on. I mean, having really good materials um, is good when you're talking about maybe making certain flies that have to have the head laid down perfect and, and all that. But when you're chasing bluegill and bass, um, I do use you know a, a uh, you know the regular tying threads. I like a, a white three aught, and then I'll, I'll collar them myself um, to get to get whatever collar I want uh, with a with a, I use Copic pins. You can use sharpies or whatever. But as you can see, all I'm doing right here is building a weighted head on on the end of the hook right here. And um, I mean that's about as simple as it gets. That's all you got to do right there is just cover up that uh, cover up that what what I use is soldering. Uh, material and uh, just wrap thread around it. It's it's about as simple as you can get. And then uh, take some head cement to hold the the thread together so it doesn't unravel. And then on the part that I use to hold the thread in is this um, tubing. It's a craft tubing. Uh, I think you can get it over where they make bracelets and that sort of thing. I bought this at Hobby Lobby. I'm sure that you know you can get it at any craft store. I think I've even seen it in Walmart. Um, and I'm going to be using this um, tan colored worm material on, on my squirmy worm. And what I'm going to do to hold it on, and what did I do with that stuff? Here it is. Is I'm going to grab me a piece of red. I used red for the head, so I guess maybe I'll use red for the neck of the, um, of the worm. And when you cut these things, they do get really small, so you, they're not the easiest thing to get on. Um, but just slip it on the hook just like that and then flip it around. And it won't come off because you'll have that barb on the hook that will keep it from sliding off. And then you put it back up just like that. And then I'll use a bobbin threader, one of these things right here, to, uh, to thread the squirmy worm through that tubing that I just put on the hook. So let's go ahead and put the uh, bobbin threader through, take my squirmy worm. Now, I'm not going to put it uh, through too far, and you got to be careful doing this because you can cut the worm with the uh, uh, with the threader. But I, I'll I will have about an eighth to a quarter of an inch sticking out 
uh, at the end there. And then I'll grab, pinch, pull, stretch it out. You'll see how, how, how it thins out right there. And then pull it straight through, just like that. And then once it's through, I don't need the threader anymore. I grab a hold of it, stretch it, and pull it all the way through, just like that. Take the threader off, stretch it out again, and bring it down to where I want it. Right like that. And then cut off the uh, cut off the tail as long as I want it. Shoot, usually two to three inches is, is plenty long enough. This stuff is so natural uh, feeling to the fish that they will suck it in and uh, hold it a little longer than some of the other materials that are, that are used. And then one of the other things I kind of like to do on the ends, just to kind of round them off a little bit, is I'll take my lighter and hit the end just a little bit to round it off. Just like that. And then you got yourself a uh, a squirmy worm that's uh, in there nicely. It's not going to it's not going to pull out and it's not going to cut the worm. These things don't get any better than that when you're chasing bluegill. Anyway, this is Mike. Until the next video, we'll catch you later.